mm-hmm. you really, it, it seemed, I know you founded the company in 2018, but you kind of shelved mm-hmm. it for a little while. You got back on it in 2019, but you really got busy during 2020. Um, yeah. What has the growth uh, of this company look like? Meaning, how many active users um, do you have participants? Mm-hmm. You know, how 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 long are they on the app compared to to Instagram, compared to Twitter, compared to Facebook? Right. What, can, can, can you break that down for us? Yeah, so our, so our month over month growth is 40%. So we're growing pretty big. Our revenue is up over 536% in the last month since we added audio. Our real growth has come actually this month. Once we added audio, audio rooms, um, and conversation, it's really spurred a lot of growth. Um, we have when about- you say, When you say audio rooms, just to put it in comparison, we're talking similar to Clubhouse. Absolutely, yeah. Okay. And, and, there are, and, and, the, and the space is growing so fast. You have Twitter doing spaces, Facebook's doing audio, Slack's doing audio, LinkedIn's doing audio, Mark Cuban's about to do audio. So the space is now, Clubhouse is not the only game in town. You just have, you had the company, you had a company that was founded in October called Locker Room by this company called Betty Labs and Spotify just bought them, right? And they were only around for five, but just because they were doing audio. And we actually have more users than, than Locker Room, right? Even on our audio. So the, the people are wanting to get into this audio space extremely bad. Um, and so we have about 30, 37,000 users. And again, we're having these little viral these moments. all active users? Yeah, yeah. At least at least forty percent of the app is active are daily active users, and they actually and they're actually paid users too. So and how, paid. how long are they on the app daily? So the average user is on YouTube forty minutes a day. They're on Instagram fifty three minutes a day. The average user on fan base is on there for fifty five minutes a day. Wow, so that's wow. a good amount of time that they're on the platform, and I think that's significant too because. In a space where it's just audio, you're understanding that you're on there, but now you're on a space with audio and video and photos because you can be in an audio room on fan base and still surf the app in an audio room and still look at content and see content while you're in an audio space. So it adds a unique opportunity, like I said, to mesh both. So we're really excited about that. Is there anything uh, on fan base that can't be duplicated? It seems like anytime. Uh, another app comes to the table. Yeah, everybody recreates it. Uh, you right. know, no, no different than what you just said in terms of audio. Is there anything yeah. that's either proprietary or just something that is fundamentally uh, part of the DNA of a fan base that I don't care what they try to do, they just can't recreate this. Yeah, I think at this moment the founder is black. They can't read. <laughs> talk they that can't. talk. I no, and, and and the reason why I say that is because I made a post of myself next to Mark Zuckerberg, Kevin Sistrom, Evan Spiegel, and and Jack Dorsey to normalize the idea that someone can do exactly what they do but be black, right? And so, because when they found their companies, it's just an app. When I found my company, I don't want people to say it's the black Instagram, it's the black Clubhouse, it's the black Netflix. It's just, I happen to be a black founder and I work hard to let people know that anybody can use fan base. It's open for anybody to use, but the comfortability that I have that I put African-American culture in mind equally with every user, as opposed to what happens on other platforms where we get culturally appropriated or we don't really have the opportunities that these other influencers and other users do, where they're highlighted on these other platforms, that's extremely important. And so, no, there isn't really anything too proprietary, but it's also about execution because, you know, in this space, we all can do that. And then it's also about timing because I built fan base for the centennial generation, right? And, and one thing I feel comfortable about is there's no amount of innovation that Facebook and Instagram can do to capture the youth. They just can't do it simply because kids are always going to want to be on apps that their parents are not on. My mama is on Facebook. I left Facebook. I'm on Instagram. My little brother is not on Instagram. He's on apps like TikTok and Twitch and so on and so forth. So when you build an app that you're going to have a customer base that's going to be with you 10, 15 years, 
you start young. You start at 18, so you have somebody from 18 to 30, right? And they grow up and live their life on that platform. Now we all can participate because they're grown people that'll be on they're grown people on TikTok right now that take advantage of it. But the bulk of your customer base, you always have to focus on the youth because there's always going to be another social network. There'll be one after fan base and so on and so forth, because we're always going to want to live in these spaces and have our own community, our friends, our lingo our energy, our conversation. So I feel comfortable going into the space knowing that it's a black founded company. It keeps African-American people in mind as something that won't be appropriated and it's for the youth. You know, I should have asked you this question earlier mm -hmm. and, and you just answered it, but I want you to go a little deeper into it. Is there, is there enough room? You know, I, mm -hmm. I, I am not part of the centennial generation. Yeah. I don't even have the bandwidth to, 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 to grow another following. Is there enough room out there? Are, are, are there enough users to say, you know what? There's another social platform that has now yeah. come on to the market and it can win. Absolutely. I mean, you got to think globally, there's almost four or 5,000 billion people on the internet. And some of these platforms tap out at about, you know, I mean, Facebook is the king, but some of these apps only have 300 million users, 200 million users. That's a fraction, right? There's more than enough room for everybody to be, be, to be on these platforms. And to tell you the truth, there are a lot of other platforms out here that are successful, right? Patreon is a very successful company. OnlyFans is a very successful company. Everybody ha finds their space and their place in their community. There are apps right now that you don't know about that are wildly successful, right? So definitely, that's the thing about it is like, you have to try because if you, if you feel like, oh, I guarantee you before Clubhouse, people said the social media space was dead, like it was over. If you tried to find a social media platform, they would have laughed you out of the room. Yeah. Here comes Clubhouse and does audio and all of a sudden it's like, well, wait a minute, there's an opportunity here now to really make some money. And for me, understanding how important audio was and how and the effect that African-American people had on Clubhouse, and making that platform extremely popular, again, is one of the main reasons why I felt like we needed to add audio because I understand the value that our conversation brings to culture. So yeah, there's plenty of room. I don't, there's more than enough room, absolutely. Beautiful. Uh, another question for you. It, you know, Average Joe, Sean Prez, if I wanted to create an app, mm -hmm. uh, if I just wanted to build a, a scalable business, successful business. Are there any traits that you found that you have that are absolutely essential for anyone who is trying to create a successful business? Yes, and it's only one. Perseverance, persistence, persistence. I, so look, real quick, one of my favorite movies to watch if you haven't watched is The Founder. Have you, I, just, I just talked about this movie on Monday. Wow, go ahead. So persistence, because I'm gonna tell you right now, say what you want about Ray Kroc. That man was 52 years old when he came across McDonald's and he had a vision behind, beyond the original creators of the, of the company themselves. And he was persistent. He took, he had people laugh at him. He failed multiple times over and over and over again. He was selling milkshakes door to door and people were telling him no. And I think that it doesn't, it, like, like again, talent, education, genius, none of that matters. It's persistence. Even from the, from the music industry, you've probably seen a million talented people, but it's the person that shows up to the studio every day. The one that slept on the floor, that one that never took no for an answer. The one that grinded and grinded and grinded and grinded until they, until they found that break. It's all about persistence. That's my energy. I'm just a persistent person. I, I'm going to get doors shut in my face. I'm going to get people laughing at me like, oh, that app will never work. It doesn't matter. It's all about will and persistence. You just have to stay focused and keep going. So it's just persistence. You know, I, I swear, people would think that you and I have had uh, offline conversations about this same topic. No. I preach this every chance I get. So for my audience, listen clearly. Yeah. I couldn't have said it no better. Yeah. Me, like you, I have been in rooms I have befriended, I have been around some of the most successful 
human beings of our generation. Right. And there is only one thing, just one, that separates them from you. They never, ever, ever, no matter how many times they got knocked down, no matter how many times they had no told to them straight to their face, no matter how many times doors were slammed in their face, they never, ever, ever gave up. That is the only factor that I can look and say he or she has this one thing in common. Mm -hmm. just the, they all share just this one detail, this one personality trait, this one thing that I can identify in all of these successful people, no matter what industry they're in, is just, they never stop coming. It, it, they right. just never stop, period. Right. So it doesn't matter, you know, education, I truly believe, is the great equalizer. Yeah. Get as educated as you want. Some people are born with gifts. Some people are born and they just come out of the womb and they're just better at, uh, 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 maybe they run fast or they jump high. All of that right. stuff is great. But the ones who are truly successful, they are just persistent as a mother. They never, ever, yeah. ever take no for an answer. What's up, guys? Thanks for sticking with me to the end of the video. Truly appreciate you. If you like anything you heard here today, go ahead and hit that subscribe button. And if you know anybody that can benefit from this message, feel free to share. Peace and love.